What's up, Paracruz? I'm Paradomix, and welcome to Star Swirl Academy, time and time again. Oh, actually, it just says time again. So anyways, this is a game that was made in... Oh shit, 2012, oh my god. But this was a game that I played a long time ago, but I never got to finish it. But it was still a demo, and still to this day, it's still a demo. Apparently, this is an MLP visual novel game, but it's based on MLP, but they're humans. Yeah, don't you ever want to date um, your your favorite MLP character, but humans, but and also not in a, in like a realistic colors, not in a weird techno color kind of kind of way. Yeah, this is one of the games. But I don't know if this is about dating. It's a, basically it's a school drama, I think maybe. Who knows? But anyways, uh, I played this game before. I never finished it. Kind of gave up on it. Uh, but then again, I'm. I wasn't really interested in visual novel kind of games, and then later as a, and then I later in the future I started playing visual novel related games. But anyways, uh, here we go. Let's start the demo. Uh, there's a drinking game once a year in board meeting. Oh wow! All right, so let's go. Got. I know there were cutscenes. You know that sounds so familiar. That music. Maybe because it's this game that demo presented it's still in development, it's not reflected in the final game, some features mean it's placeholder. Well, it we might as well make this the final game. Because this is it's never gonna get updated ever again. Because it's the uh, according to the developers from their Discord, the game has been cancelled. And I think the game will never see the light of day ever again. But the develop one of the developers I think or the people who are part of this said they were making another game. I don't know what it is yet, but, you know, it's fine. I'll just focus on this one, I guess. This all feels like one big dream. Dreams being the only place where I feel brave enough to stray from the path life has path life has paid for me. Sticking to the path assures me that nothing can go wrong. Following the routine, playing my part, speaking when spoken to. It's a structure for that, for the most part, has helped me play it safe. It seems that without any proper direction, I always end up making bad decisions. These actions have defined myself as a person I would rather leave behind. <clears throat> Since I've come to terms with that, I found it hard to give myself the rein over my life again. That is, if someone like a teacher tells me to do something, I go along with it. Even if my only friend in the world has the same authority, after all, they seem to have everything worked out better than I do. But is all this what's best for me I don't even know what's important to me right now I haven't put much thought into it and honestly I'm not sure if I want to I feel so unprepared there I was willingly surrendering to a solitude to a life of solitude when in reality a click in its finger in my face this path I've been hopelessly dragging myself down was taking me nowhere to continue with it I would have been meaningless I allowed myself to take a detour, although I don't feel like I've broken the mold from having done so. Because I wouldn't I wouldn't even be going to the school if my friend hadn't opened the door for me. But for what it's worth, I'm grateful she did. I'll have a chance now. A chance to be something. Tom? Oh wait, couldn't we have picked our names? I guess you can't do it in this demo. Tom? Hmm? Hey! Earth to Tom! There you are. We're spacing out again. Oh, sorry. My arm throbs a little. Ow. You should pay attention when someone's talking to you. It's rude to ignore people, you know. I've heard this lecture before. If there's one thing I know about Tai, it's that she's always she always has a lecture prepared for what she thinks. But for when she thinks I've done something wrong. Yeah, this is Twilight Sparkle, everybody. Hmm. She's a very young. She's, she's awfully young. She, she's like a little girl, actually. <laughs> she really never changed. Not, not, that's a, not that that's a bad thing. Sorry. I guess I'm just trying to wrap my head around everything that's going on. It's just too surreal. What's surreal about it? The fact it's happening at all, I suppose. One day I'm going through a motion of my old school, and the next Ty comes back to my life, comes back into my life, trying to convince me to go to this fancy academy of hers. Trying, succeeding.
seating. Nothing, I guess. She makes an expression like she knows what I'm thinking anyway. You aren't still dwelling on this, are you? You didn't come you didn't have to come if you didn't want to, you know. I sigh. No, you didn't force me. I just I agreed to go, but I'm not sure if this is what I wanted to do. Things are moving so fast for me. It doesn't even feel real. Well, perhaps this will be a good thing for you. If you're stuck in a rut, trying new things is a good way to spur your creativity. Since you are always dragging your feet, I think Star Swirl will do you some good. It probably will. After all, it's a prestigious school and it'll challenge me academically. There will be new opportunities I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't have had back home. I bet you'll, find you'll be able to find what's what you're good at before you know. I laugh. You make it sound so easy. <clears throat> You never know until you try, right? I suppose. You really should get more into the spirit of this. Star Swirl Academy is going to be absolutely amazing. I can already feel it. Tai has come, has always seen the brighter side of life. Whenever I'm unsure of certain, or un unsure or uncertain about what's going on, she's already rushing forward. She told me that while she was away, she had met amazing people and learned amazing things. I'm still not entirely sure what she went through, but it seems to have made her grow quite a lot as a person. She must really have it together to, re to receive the scholarship she did. The Headmaster Scholarship. It's so out of my league. It's kind of funny when I think about it. Actually, that reminds me. So this Headmaster, what's he like? She is my idol. Oh, I just assumed. Oh, remember this was 2014. Where it was okay to do that. Tom, if you ever assume that again, this year, people will kill you. Anyone would have guessed the headmaster was a man. Wouldn't a woman be headmistress? Although now that I think about it, I suppose it's not that uncommon. There's a lot that could be said about her. At least she didn't give me a lecture on that subject. It's very sexist to assume that the headmaster is a man. She has this sense of grace about her. She does everything with a regal air. She's incredibly smart, probably the smartest person ever. She's incredibly kind and forgiving, both wise and clever. And for her age, she's beautiful. Wow, that's quite a glowing review, Ty. If I had to guess, it sounds like you have a crush on her. What? Absolutely not. She's just a very nice woman. I'm excited to finally meet her. Hey, it's okay with me if you swing that way. I just would have never guessed you went for the older types. Ty turns away from me to stare out the window. You're a jerk sometimes. Better than always a jerk. I chuckle. Teasing her always brightens my mood a little. Her reactions are so adorable. I'm sure you'll like Star Swirl Academy. Just give it a chance, alright? I will, Ty. Don't worry. The cabin goes quiet. Only the sound of the train clacking against the rail remains. After a few minutes of watching the passing landscape flashes by, my eyes wanders over Ty. She's curled up against the window, resting her head in her arms. She seems so calm and peaceful. It's almost as if I were looking at a completely different person. Ty always was a workaholic, even when we were younger. She never stopped studying, and if she wasn't working a, on homework or a project, she at least had she had at least a dozen clubs that she that she was at least a member of. It's no wonder that I, that she and I didn't spend that much time together in the past couple of years. Walking to and from school was probably the extent of us seeing each other. Ty looks to be asleep, her face pressed against the panel of the train car. She tuckered out the wind quickly. I guess even the workaholic can burn herself out. Well, she is just human after all. The rhythm of a train bumping against the tracks below is the only thing breaking the silence. Sure, why not? She's been relentless. She's been relentless in her teasing lately. I slowly stand up to reach my luggage above Ty's seat. I unzip the front pocket and she looks up at me. What are you doing? I quickly zip the pocket and zip back down. Just checking something. Oh well, she probably would have killed me anyway. <laughs> but she's already awake. Might as well let her sleep. Unless I... was that? Carousel Boutique. Senator Myth. Is that the name of the music? 
as I suffer the wrath of the grumpy Saito, <laughs> Saito monster. I get up as quietly as I can and shuffle towards the compartment door. It takes a little while. It takes a little while for me to adjust standing from after having sat for so long. It can be a little disorienting. Walking on a train while it's moving. I'm sure Tai would have a super nerdy physics explanation for it. I think the train porter mentioned a dining car at the back. As I make my way there, there seem to be a few, very few passengers. It almost feels like this train is empty. There's gotta be other students aboard, right? Eh, I guess they're probably napping at a train and right in their cabins like Tai is. The cafe car is huge, much bigger than I expected. And like everywhere else, seemingly empty. Hello there! An energetic voice calls out from behind the bars. What? The counter shakes and an empty cup falls on the floor. Ah! Who are you? You don't look like any MLP character that I've- Oh, you must be derpy. You must be- Yeah, you must be derpy. Oh, you derpy, huh? A girl jumps out, rubbing her head and wincing. Yeah, that's a derpy thing. You okay? I'm fine. Ah, Star Swirl? I glance down. With his clothes, I suppose everyone will recognize me as an, ac an academy student now. Yeah, I'm on my way to... My eyes are suddenly drawn to her clothes. You're a student in Sars World too? Mm-hmm. But what are you doing here? What am I doing here? She doesn't seem to follow my question. I mean today. It's Friday! No. Working on a train? Why are you working here? Oh, no! Working on... I'm making some extra money to pay for tuition. Not quite there. <laughs> no, I mean, isn't it a school day? It's rhetorical, of course. I'm sure it is. School starts on Monday. Oh yeah, it is. I don't think I'm gonna get my question answered. But even so, for a school with a reputation of Star Swirl, I would have expected them to be more strict than that. The girl puts something wrapped in foil in front of me. My thought, oh, my train of thought is suddenly derailed. Judging by the shape, it looks like a sandwich. Here you are, but I didn't even... It's on the house. I do admit, sandwich sounds good. Groan. I can't argue with a free sandwich. Or my stomach for that matter. Alright, thanks. No problem. Better get back to work. Got lots of dishes to clean. Okay, see you later, uh... Dixie. Nah, that's derp. You derp. Tom. Nice to meet you, Tom. See you around. You too. I wave and head back to the compartment. Unwrapping a sandwich from silver foil, I notice its ingredients are peeking out on the side. Lettuce, tomatoes, and some kind of pale meat? Turkey? A bite confirms this. I'm not disappointed. It's not terribly big. I finish the thing by the time I reach the door to the compartment, which again open up very carefully. Ty still asleep. She's moved from the window as a pillow to sprawl as a pillow to sprawling out over the entire seat. A small puddle of drool has formed near her mouth. I should probably get some rest myself. I stretched and laid down on my chair. Ty's got the right idea. This is much better than trying to sleep sitting up. It's perfect for napping. Dear Headmaster Solomon. Oh. Voice acting, I forgot there's voice acting. I'm writing to thank you again for the opportunity to study at Star Swirl Academy. I never dreamed that I'd be able to attend a school like this, and it wouldn't have been possible without your generous scholarship. I know that it's uncommon for students to transfer in for their senior year, but I'm confident that I'll be able to find my talent all the same. I'll be arriving on campus later this week, and I look forward to finally meeting you in person. Your future student, Tai Saito. I should also thank you for making special arrangements for... Tom? Tom? Tom! Wake up! We're almost there! I'm guessing this was supposed to be fully voiced and the guy would have a voice as well. Because this doesn't feel like a character... Like we're in the shoe of the main character, like we're the MC. It's like we're seeing the perspective of Tom, I guess. I shift from my sleep and let out a yawn. Welcome back to the land of the living, sleepyhead. 
you were out like a light. Ugh, the train's comfier than it looks. I let out another yawn as I rub my eyes, letting Ty come into focus. Come on, grab your stuff. The taxi will be waiting for us. Star Swirl's just a short drive from the station. There's that gleam in her eye. The one that shows how excited she is. I usually only see it when she, when she's savoring a brand new book. But it seems Star Swirl draws out the same kind of buzz. Alright, I'm up, I'm up. I stand up and give a stretch before grabbing my luggage from overhead. Ty quickly does the same. The train stops outside a small station. Sure enough, a taxi is waiting nearby. Ty and I place our bags in a trunk and step into the cab. I'm guessing Star Wars students? I give a slight nod to his reflection in a rear view. I can only see his eyes though, can't quite make out his face. You got it, boss. The taxi lurches into drive as we pull away from the station and through what seems to be the center of town. Can't say I see, I've seen you two around here. Either you two have grown since last year or I'm losing my marbles. Neither, sir. We're just transferring seniors. It's our first time here. Ain't that right? Well, welcome to the Aphelion Valley, kid. While not busy enough for bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, there's still a sense of hustle and activity amongst the town's residents. Gas stations along the outskirts soon become restaurants and shops. A small plaza where not too many people are out and about, but I'm able to recognize the academy uniform some are wearing as we drive by. Well, Tom, this is it, our new home for the next few months. The tone of her voice is a bit familiar. Something similar to what my parents had said when we moved into town I currently lived in, or, well, I used to live in, I suppose. We'll make the most of it. After turning in, in, after turning an intersection, the plaza slightly fades out of view. Shops become apartments, which soon become a line of trees. And before I realize how far we drove, we're here. There it is. Lyra and Bon Bon. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm yawning. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit sleepy, guys. The car comes to a stop in front of a uh, some rather regal looking gates. Contrast to architectures we've been seeing, I figure it must be at least 20 minutes walk back to town. I step out of the car, I'm suddenly taken aback by the reality of the situation. In front of me are the gates that will lead to the next years of my life and perhaps even some further in the future. It's something I can't even begin to grasp right now. I can see a massive area of line and grass, lush grass and trees beyond the gate. Just looking at it, I would assume it was a park, but beyond the grass I can see uh, grass and trees I can make out a massive building, which I assume is on the main campus. It's... it's huge. It seems Ty is just as much as awe as I am. This much removed from what I'm used to back home, with a simple little house and a school like that. And a school that, while big, was nowhere near this size. Excuse me. Gah, I was awestruck by the size of the school. I didn't even notice someone was waiting for us in front of the gate. Oh, hey, it's you. Hey, Dixie. You know her? I met her on a train. Dixie, this is Ty. Dixie posit positively beams at Ty. Uh, hello. Hi there. You want to walk us in? Walk in with us? Actually, the headmaster told me to meet you too. Headmaster Solomon sent you? Mm-hmm. She clears her throat and... Holds her hands behind her back, standing on standing on her tiptoes to give her herself extra height. Allow me to be the first to welcome you to Star Swirl Academy. Wait a sec, if the headmaster sent you and you were already on the train, why didn't you meet up with us at the station? I don't know. Oh, because she told me to welcome you at the gate, not the not the train. Well, alright. I wasn't really expecting a formal greeting. I mean we're just students arriving at school. Isn't that supposed to be a normal thing? Just how ridiculously upscale is this place? Well, it's very nice to meet you, Dixie. Are you here to take us to the headmaster's office? Oh no, I'm just here to take your luggage. The headmaster wanted to make sure you weren't dragging your luggage around, so she sent me. <laughs> and now our luggage is being carried to our room? Ty, what have you gotten me into? Uh, uh, well, uh, I appreciate the offer, but it's not necessary. I can carry our luggage. Oh, it's really no trouble for me. I do this sort of thing all the time around here. Are, are you sure? They're kind of heavy. Don't count me out just yet. I'm stronger than I look. <laughs> this 
a derp face, there we go. As a, dem as a demonstrator point, she quickly saunters over to our luggage and picks it up. When she has everything, she managed to balance them in her arms, though I can't help but notice her knees are shaking a little. I have to admit, she's stronger than she looks, though obviously she doesn't have to carry all of it. Most of the bags have wheels. Well, you certainly can hold your own. I guess we can trust you with our luggage, luggage then. Just be careful. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Or my stuff. Hehe, <laughs> don't worry. I'm just showing off. She quickly places the luggage back on the ground and grabs hold of them the way they were meant to be lifted. Wait just a moment. Let me see the bags for a second. I inspect the bag for a split second and smiles with a nod. I can take care of the rest. You guys can go meet the headmaster. Your things will be in your room when you get there. Oh, did she bring Spike? Or the dog, I guess. I guess Spike would be a dog here. So this could be based off Equestria Girls. Before either of us could say any more, she disappeared behind the gate. Already in her way to the door. Uh, wait. Where are our rooms anyway? No one's told us where we're staying. Don't worry, the headmaster will tell us once we get to her office. Let's go inside, shall we? She wanted to meet her meet us she wanted us in her office by three thirty, so it's best not to keep her waiting. Sure, let's do it. <clears throat> Thai followed Dixie's footsteps and opened the front door. I quickly followed behind her. The courtyard opens up before me, and I get the feel for how big this place really is. It's all I can do to keep from keep from oh, it's all I can do from gawking at as my eyes wander about the scenes and ever slowly approaching the building. In the distance, I hear what sounds to be like a school bell going off. Students slowly start appearing as they head their way to various activities. Some of them pass us, perhaps on their way to school, into town. Some are just out for a walk in the park. And others seem to be waiting for people. Oh. Well, anyways, I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna do a little quick save here. I'm gonna end the video here and continue this in the next one. I'm gonna split this by parts because this is a very short game. It says it can beat it, it can be beat like uh, it's like 120 minutes long, but just the fact of how slow I read, it could take a lot longer than that. But yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.